We only strive to bring you the best here at Managing Madrid. Welcome to a new episode of Castilla Corner. I'm joined with Ridjam, as always, my co-host. How are you doing, Ridjam? I'm doing well. How are you? How are you? Very well. Very well indeed, because um, this is a moment we've been waiting for for genuinely years. We have a special guest. We've had one former player before. Now we have another former player. Uh, I would like to welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mink Peters to the podcast. How are you doing, Mink? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Great, um, great. We've got so much to ask you. I know we, if we put questions out on the, we've got a Discord server, I think hundreds would have come back. So what we've done is we've tried to construct the best 10 or so questions we can um, just to try and sift out the best bits, the worst bits, all the information we can about your time in the club and then find out how it's going now, what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll start off with a question that I think I had to ask. Um, it's something that everyone following the club dreams and knowing, everyone listening here has always thought about, and only a select few people on earth can actually describe. What is it like to be a Real Madrid player, walking around the street, <laughs> playing Real Madrid, going to Valde Bebas, getting that paycheck in from Real Madrid yeah. Limited? What is it like? It's, uh, <laughs> that's a question I get a lot from the people, um, especially after your time when you, like, I finished uh, being a real um, uh, Real Madrid player, but yeah. when I was playing there, they also they saw me more as a player of Madrid. And then um, when you finished uh, with playing there, they all asked like, "How was it? Did you see Ronaldo? Did you train with the first team? Uh, um, did you speak with uh, especially all the, like the big players? They all want to hear about Ronaldo, yeah, Cesar yeah. Ramos." Uh, but um, yeah, it was great. It was a dream, um, especially if I. Yeah, I can think about it now, like like my my past period there, and um, yeah, it was just a dream. Like uh, for all young players, it is amazing to uh, to play for the biggest team in the in the world. Um, yeah, right. And um, yeah, like at that point, I was not you 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 feel like Real Madrid player, so you're not really thinking about it all the time. But yeah, if I just now look to the past that I've played there for like four or five years. That's just uh, it's unbelievable, and I'm really, really glad that I can say that I've played for for this. Yeah, this club. right. I mean, what are the, the diagnosis like? Do they give you how many training kits do you get? What's your schedule like? Do you train every day? <laughs> yeah. So first of all, I moved with 16 to Madrid. So I was playing yeah. Ajax. Then I moved to Madrid, and then um, yeah, you could like straight away from the beginning, I could feel that this was just another level. Like. The training really? pictures, the dressing room, uh, the mm-hmm. physios. There were like six physios available for just a few teams. Like uh, so many coaches. Uh, every team has almost like a doctor. So it was just like all this stuff was just uh, unbelievable and so professional. So um, yeah, the level of training, the intensity, the names that like the coaches that they were like Guti, Solari, yeah. Zidane, yes. like. If they're speaking to you and they're explaining an exercise, you just, yeah, you just try to listen as 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 best as you can, just to make sure that you take all the, the advices with you. So, um, yeah, it was amazing to be honest. Yeah, really good. Amazing. I'll tell you now. I always believed that I was the best player down at my local park when I was a kid, and it was an amazing feeling, like skilling people. You, let's be real, here, you were probably what the best player in the world for your age from under 10s maybe to under 16s what oh, what did that feel like did you did you realize yeah, that were you yeah. just a kid loving his football yeah at that time you're just not thinking about any of that you're just playing your football you're just <laughs> playing your best football and especially uh, at the age of like 14 till 17 18 i was like performing really really well and playing with the national team and um yeah, like playing all the tournaments, being one of the the main the main player superstars. Like I move up with uh, to Juvenila, that's like the the mm. team with 16. So it was like uh, it was like a dream, but at the same time you you're just playing, you're just enjoying football, and and then everyone else is saying like, why wow, you're so good or you have so much talent. <laughs> it's just yeah, you're just playing your football and you just doing your best but yeah, right. it's not that you really think yes i am uh, this superstar <laughs> now you just you just play you just play and, and yeah right as, as long as you can and at that age i think you also should just play enjoy and 
and yeah that's I think the most important and what everyone is saying in the media of course I saw it but it was not uh, influencing me that much <laughs> yeah Roger have you got a question are you there yeah um so my question dates back to your youth career so you start you obviously play with Ajax um what mm -hmm. players did you play with how did you find playing there and who coached you who yeah. was like notable players that you played with yeah, in Ajax, we all know that Ajax is also like a great uh, development school for young players. So, yeah, I played with, with big names like Matthijs de Ligt, for example, was in my team. Justin Kluivert. Um, yeah. Let me check. Yeah, we had a lot of players. Donjo Mahler was with me. Uh, Noah Lang. Uh, they are all performing really, really well now. Yeah. Um, so... Um, yeah, yeah, I think in my team there are like only like a few guys who didn't make it, and now the other guys are playing in the first league in the Netherlands or it's even incredible. even yeah, even in the top in the Champions League. So it's it's yeah, it's like really really good to uh, to see that uh, that I've played with them, but also that um in in my case that I can also maybe still get to some of of of, of their level. So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah, that's an incredible statistic when you think. The statistic for people who make it is something ridiculous, like 5% yeah. or, or sub. So for most of those players, including yourself, to be in the professional game is, that's incredible. It's a testament to Ajax, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ajax is great at that, we have to say. Like, Ajax is uh, to to develop players and to, to make them to the first league somewhere. They are very good at it. Yeah, right. And then I do remember when you signed for Real Madrid, actually very clearly, because it was just before... <laughs> Some time ago now, I, I created my Castilla Stats account. Um, and I think you signed, is this right in the same week or the same time period as Martin Erdegaard, Marco Asensio, and maybe yeah, another yeah. player as well? Yeah, it's true. We all came uh, at the same time. So that was funny because we all left footed. Uh, we all play a little bit <laughs> similar yeah. style of playing. But we're all like attacking midfielders. Or... So it was, it was funny that we... Uh, I think there was like a big uh, paper, uh, Marca, uh, that yeah, was posting, right. uh, posting like uh, the newest stars from Madrid with Asensio, me and... Ötland. You're on the cover, was, yeah, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was good, yeah, yeah. How did you learn that Real Madrid were interested in you? And why did you go for the move when Ajax, as you say themselves, are pretty good with the, the youngsters? Mm -hmm. No, so first of all, in Ajax at that time, there was a rule that uh, you could only sign a contract with 17. Um, okay. In in Europe and everywhere else, you can sign with 16. So uh, when uh, the teams found out, like big teams in England, big teams in in Spain, found out that uh, this was happening in Ajax, um, yeah, they offered me and like two other guys from my team, uh, Timothy Fosumensa and uh, Javairo de Rosen. They both moved to England at the same time as I moved to Spain ah. because. Uh, yeah, like Ajax was was great for us. I think if we could stay there, or if we stayed there, it would be would be good. But just to make sure that you uh, have a contract already with um, like Madrid, gave me a lot of perspective in the future with going to the under nineteen, working with great coaches. They really wanted to push me forward. Mm. Um, and Ajax also was so I was seen as one of the big uh, talents there. Yeah. But at the same time, they um, yeah they they couldn't could not offer me uh, anything with 16 and at the same time Ajax at that point had no second team playing in the second league in the Netherlands okay so the, sec the second team was just uh, playing like all against all the under 21s from the uh, top teams so under 21 of uh, Heerenveen of Pente of uh, Feyenoord PSV but it was mm. not professional professional second league football so that made also some some difference in my um, in my choices, and I think for me the most important was I also told my parents like there's maybe one time that I can move to Real Madrid, and that's now. And uh, yeah, I have to take this chance because yeah, I can maybe say to everyone else later that I, I played for Madrid, and it was just my dream, and yeah, mm. I really had to follow that. So. Even if I exit all these other other options that I just said, I still would have go to to Madrid. Madrid is just Madrid, and Madrid is no one can beat Madrid. That's still how I I have this in my head. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, yeah. you've mentioned a lot of it already, um, and we will of course talk about the injuries and not so positives, and we'll get on to that. Mm -hmm. 
But when you actually look at your Real Madrid Academy career, it's it's pretty impressive. You were obviously injured for probably the majority of your time there, and you still played probably about 40, 50 odd games. From what I've seen, you've scored double figures, 10 odd goals, with plenty of assists on top of that. You were, as you've mentioned, part of the Gooty treble winning team, which I don't think has been matched or achieved by any other team in, in recent history. So one of the best sides in recent history. Um, you've got a contract extension, and it's obviously the cherry on the top of the cake was that you carried the club into the quarterfinals of the UEFA Youth League when you scored your, your double in Monaco. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your personal favourite moment in a Real Madrid shirt? Yeah, like, there's so many. But I think my, my favourite, I think just you mentioned it because I just came back from an injury at that point as mm. well. Um, and in Monaco, I, I came in in the second half. We were losing. We had a tough match. And then, yeah, I played very, very good second half. And I could help the team to uh, to secure the win. So it was really, really nice. Good feeling. And, yeah, especially what you said. I had so many injuries in Madrid. I mm. was, um, yeah, like, I don't know what happened there. It's still sometimes hard to... to to think, okay, is it uh, uh, like was my body not ready for it? Maybe the the intensity that I moved up to 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 the older guys was maybe too uh, too hard. Mm. Um, but yeah, you never know. It is also unlucky things like I I had like I broke my wrist, I broke my collarbone, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all this stuff, stupid things. So overall, I had like uh, so many surgeries in 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 a few years. So. Mm. Um, that took me out for, yeah, for 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 a long time, and then every time fighting back. But like the the best the best time was, like when I also when I see this this footage back when I see myself playing with the smile when I scored this this winner, that's yeah that's really good to see. Yeah, incredible. I mean, carrying the club that might have been your biggest moment. I've actually got two personal favorites. I've been doing a lot of research into to your time at the club, mm-hmm. and they're not actually goals. <clears throat> you got two assists, one for Ashraf Hakimi. I don't know if you remember this one where you've just kind of ghosted the defender because obviously your your weight of balance and your centre of gravity is so low. You've gone past him and you've, mm-hmm. you've squared it and Ashraf Hakimi's like, I think it was a back heel or a nice flick. Very oh, very yeah, 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 yeah. Like from a corner kick, I think. I received yeah, ball, something yeah. like that. You <laughs> picked the ball up. And then the second one, I think just summed you up as a talent. You've um spun the first player, so he's nowhere near you. With your balance, you've just again taken that one touch forward. The second player's gone flying, and then you've squared it to who would that have been? Um, I will show the clip as we're speaking now. But oh, who did you square it to? It was another big name player. Um, probably Danny. It could have even just been like a Danny Gomez or someone like that. But again, yeah, another yeah. superb pro. And um, yeah, they were definitely out of everything I saw. That those moments of quality there for the create goals were yeah mm-hmm. quite. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> That's good to hear. So you must have thought it was going really well at some point. Um, mm-hmm. You then got, you signed your contract for Castilla, is that right? Yeah, true. I extended my contract after three years or two and a half years for <laughs> two two more years. And then I was starting with Castilla in the preseason. And yeah. then I could uh, go to the first league in the Netherlands for a long period. Yeah. So I uh, I moved over there because I really wanted to play uh, at the highest level somewhere uh, and get my minutes, of course. Um, so I moved to the Netherlands back, uh, but yeah, it didn't work out as what I what I wanted. So I was not playing much. Um, mm. And then after that, I moved back to um, after that year. So I moved in the winter to another team in the Netherlands because I was not playing much in the first league. So I moved to the second league. Mm. And then um, I played. I played a bit more, but I got yeah. Like I don't want to speak too ma- too many about injuries, but um, <laughs> I got like appendix uh, surgery, so I was out for uh. also like uh, two months. So I was playing there, but not not that many minutes that I wanted. Like not playing like ten, fifty matches straight away. Mm. Um, so I moved back to Castilla again, training there, and uh, yeah, that was. I felt again like when I was in Madrid. I felt again like trust of the the club, and yeah, all was good. So, uh, so yeah, I extended my contract, but my loan periods were not uh, not the periods that I that uh, yeah that helped me to become like uh, 
the next step in uh, in in football or next step to go maybe to the first team in Madrid or yeah, uh, yeah I mean this is a real point of interest because I feel obviously I followed the, the young players at the club and I have done for so long now just as a part time mm-hmm. job now almost I feel that the loan system that that Madrid have in place is questionable I think that a lot of young players mm-hmm. are kind of pushed out on loan. And there's not much of a plan as to where they're going, what they're going to do, the environment that you're sending them into. You, I think the, the biggest clubs I saw was uh, the Venlo Club in, in the, the Dutch mm-hmm. club, right? And you played in Spain for a little bit, for Lieda. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Did you feel like it was well planned or did you just kind of arrive thinking, I'm not sure about this? I think oh. in Madrid, the vision is, is really like, okay, if this guy is really good, he can play whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, so... If he goes on loan there and he's good enough, he will play. So it's true that um, Madrid was not really pushing any of these teams, like saying like, okay, why is he not playing or uh, give him a chance? Or I was hoping, that's true, that Madrid maybe would uh, push a little bit uh, a bit more for, for mm-hmm. that player. But I also understand from that point of view, like, okay, if you want to, become one of our top players you have to show yourself at these teams. briefly absolutely so uh, yeah so it's um i agree uh, maybe um there could have been uh, better options for me um for the loan period or teams that maybe fitted me uh, like suited me better than the teams that i that i went through but um yeah, at the end, that's uh, that's also a little bit uh, football. I think they just want to see who can survive and who's, yeah, who not. Yeah. Ruthless. No, you're, you're not yeah. wrong because you know you yeah. you would want to, as we say, the biggest talents in the world. The hype behind you. You're on the front cover of these newspapers. Everyone's mm-hmm. talking about you, and you are right. The Real Madrid as an institute, I think, is so big and so historic that it doesn't particularly matter. We've seen it with Erdogan, some of the mm-hmm. biggest talents in the world at the mm-hmm. time, but if if you're not ready or they feel like you haven't done enough, they, it, you will just get pushed to the side. Yeah, um, and true. it's pretty ruthless. But it's interesting you see it in an in, in instance of almost like fair game as, as to the institute mm-hmm. they are and what you want to try and achieve. Yeah, it's like um, I've learned a lot after all these years, especially with the, that. I, I'm not a guy that always wants to complain or saying that it's someone else's. Uh, I think I should always look look first at myself and, I, I, first of all, had so many problems with my body. So I really was upset that I could not just train every day, play every uh, weekend and just improve myself there. But at the same time, um, when I was playing or training, maybe that could have, uh, I could have done even better there. So it's, I think it's not, not, not uh, the case that Madrid uh, or some other team uh, was just not... Uh, not doing well for me or whatever it's just admirable uh, yeah. yeah yeah amazing were you disappointed at all that you didn't really get a shot at Castilla at any point um because I know I was at the time because we've had players at Castilla that have, have had sustained injuries and have not really featured mm-hmm. much but your talent carried you all the way there and I just remember being a little bit disappointed that they didn't give you an extended opportunity it's happened with players before as you say yeah, no, yeah, true. true. Now you had first you had this Real Madrid C. I think that's 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 back again. Mm, mm. So it's like for players that maybe didn't get as many minutes, but the club still trust in their abilities and their talent, so they can still play their matches with Real Madrid C. But yeah. when I was there, Real Madrid C was was yeah was yeah mistaken. T- yeah, it was not there. It was like for a few years it was it was not there. Mm. Um, and then they had to choose, of course, like, okay, who are the guys who move up to Castilla or the guys who go on loan to somewhere else? Um, and for me, yeah, what I said, I, I played, uh, when I was fit, I played, but they also knew that I had problems with my, uh, yeah, with staying fit. So I think they also wanted to see if I could just play one season somewhere. And I think if I played a normal season somewhere or I, I, I could have gone to Castilla and played there. Mm. Uh, a lot more or maybe I could maybe even make a step to training with the first team and get a little bit of minutes there and playing my matches still in Castilla something like uh, like that that would be my the perfect idea of uh, of uh, of how I wanted to to, uh, to go yeah absolutely I think that's probably the idea that most of the young kids have it's just not all of yeah. them are, are brought in from Ajax and, and given mm-hmm. the kind of the media attention that you were mm-hmm. um on a bit more of a positive note, then, obviously, you trained in Valdebebas. Did you live at the training ground? 
yeah, so I lived the first year at the training grind. Uh, I still was very young and yeah, like I just wanted to be close to the pitches and uh, yeah, like know the players and uh, start to learn Spanish, of course. It was also very yeah. important. And then um, after one year or one year and a half, I moved to my own apartment in the city center in Madrid. And then I just started uh, living uh, a bit on my own uh, growing up. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. I imagine that was different. I mean, what are your best memories? Not necessarily when you lived there, but when you were training, when you were around, mm-hmm. from just in and around Bada Bay. Did you bump into anyone? Did you, um, did you get to train with the first team ever? What, <laughs> what were your best memories? So, yeah, like one of my best memories is uh, like being in the swimming pool with uh, like all these players from the first team and speaking with Ronaldo that, uh, <sighs> that he, he spoke like a few words of, of Dutch, you know, like uh, cursing, like bad words in, 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 my, in my language. So it was funny to uh, that he could say this. I was like really surprised that he knew that. Um, yeah, it was really good. So that's something that I will always keep with me. Um, but especially like after training, seeing these guys. And of course, I trained with like my teammates were like Valverde, Hakim. Yeah, you're Martin good Lady enough. Guard. And the weird thing is that they are now at the top, top level, like one of the best players in the world. <sighs> and um, it's just also really nice to see that I've played with them and that I can also, at that time, I really could compare my level to them. Um, it also gives me a lot of confidence that, yeah, still going, like, uh, to try it. And they made it to the top level, so why should I not make it to maybe in between somewhere, you see? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah. So it's it's really nice to, to think about it, but at the same time to keep some uh, positive energy out of it. Yeah. Interesting. For the youth league games, did you travel with the first team? Is that how that worked? That you would be in the same yeah. kind of plane or whatever they took? Yeah. So in the group stage, you travel with the same uh, in the same plane with the with the first team. But with the um, yeah, it depends of course. Like the first team has different results than the, the yeah after the, the group. Yeah. So then after that, after the group stage, you just uh, go somewhere else. And the first team also. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, I want experience though, either way. Yeah. Um, really good. You've touched upon it already that obviously you played with Erdegaard, you played with players like Frank Garcia. Again, yeah. not a player I actually thought was going to come back to the first team, but recently has been so successful and, and obviously has his place now in the first team squad. How happy and proud are you to see? I think you played with, is it Philip Leinhardt as well? Not many people speak about Leinhardt, but even he's doing very well in the, in the Bundesliga and for his national yeah. team. Um, how happy are you to see those guys? In the first year. What's that? Yeah, 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 he was my was roommate. roommate. Was, he was like my best friend over there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really That's amazing. Cool. Yeah, we did like uh, all this stuff together, like two touch and training together. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was really good. Oh, and really he, um, because he was like, he was two years older than me, but I moved straight <laughs> up to the, to the, to his team. Mm. Um, and he was, he had a lot of quality, like for a center back, he, because he played center back in Madrid, I think sometimes he plays maybe midfield now as well, but yeah, like um, he was really technical for a center back. Um, and of course we could not speak Spanish. So we had like uh, uh, both, uh, we had the, the Spanish lessons together. We went to the city together. We were roommates. Oh. So yeah, he was like my, he was my friend there. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Really I seen cool. um during my research. This is how sad I am. My editor's first post on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a meal with you, oh, Uni Calabas, cool. yeah. Philip, and obviously Martin himself. So was that just a thing that you know you're the non-Spanish speakers, your European talents? Did you just band together at that point? Yeah, like uh, as well with Martin. I, I had a good relationship with him because we were just new. We could not speak Spanish. We all speak. Uh, <laughs> only English or we just yeah we were new you know like uh, we were helping each other um so uh yeah it was uh we had like this meal just to to know each other a little bit better and to with Junie to say like okay guys uh this is your new uh, new club uh welcome so yeah, it was good was he the one that scouted you yeah Junie scouted me yeah wow 
Yeah. He really has his fingers in every pie, doesn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Juni was the one who took me uh, to Madrid. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. interesting. That's interesting. And one other question I've got. Obviously, the media were not kind to Martin Erdegaard at all during his time at Real Madrid. I've actually seen probably quite a few stories now that, that look favourably on you. Even though when you were injured, they were saying, oh, he's, he's got the potential to be in the first team. He's one of the shining products of the academy. Did you have a good relationship with the media when you were there, would you say? Mm, well, with the the media in the Netherlands, they were speaking differently about me because I left Ajax. and I should Oh, have really? Yeah, yeah, it's normal. You know how it works. Like, I should have stayed. Yeah. And, uh, you only go to... You will be one of... Uh, you will be not detailing, but one of the the projects they are not not yeah not so important yeah. anymore. You know, yeah, it's normal <laughs> because they 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 want that I uh, that <laughs> I move to uh, to Madrid. Uh-huh. But at the same time, in Madrid, yeah, the media was always very uh, very uh, very good for me. Like they were always saying good stuff and believed in my qualities. And um, I think also when I was playing, I I showed that I also had these qualities. So mm. I really performed well when I was playing. The only problem is uh, that I was just not playing uh, too many matches because of all this, uh, all these problems in the beginning. Yeah. And then the problem that uh, somehow I don't know how it's called in English, but like the transfer, uh, like the documents were somehow not really okay, or I don't know what oh. really happened there. I think I had I could not play for the few uh, for the first few months. Oh, really? Because uh, there was some, um, I don't know what it, what it was like, maybe to put me in the in the league or if there was any problem with friends for us. But I, I, I had to wait a few months and then I was playing and then I got so many injuries. I had like from 17 till 23, 24, I had seven surgeries. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to be, even be playing now after... After being yeah, put through yeah. that is is pretty I, yeah, impressive. Yeah. I always try to be like <laughs> thinking about the future and be positive, but at the same time, a lot of people don't really know the whole story. So it's it's kind of um, they all wanna they all saying like ah oh, this uh, he did not make it, but there's a lot more to the story that it's yeah really, he did not make it. Absolutely. So um, and to be, and to be honest. It's not over yet. Like I'm, I'm still trying to get there. So yeah, right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's a good question then, on a more bright note. Who do you think <clears throat> was the best player that you played with Real Madrid? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at the you list. It's, it's heavy. It's. Uh, I will not take one of the obvious because I, I was not. I was really impressed by Borja Mayral. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was wow. in the in the I was really impressed by him. I think he was maybe the best player. Yeah, I think he, he was the best oh, player in Madrid that I've played. I think. I mean back then he was yeah, he was incredible that season because there. And obviously it's been mixed so for him players. now. But yeah, he's have you seen where he is now in the league? I think he's two or three in the in the score chart. He's still he's doing good, but I think for his what he what he showed me when he was in Madrid, he could have been the first striker yeah, oh, in yeah. Madrid first team, and wow. um, he scored like maybe I think over sixty goals in the in the under nineteen, and it's a tough league. Mm. And he was one year younger than than uh, than the other guys, so it was I was really surprised and and impressed by by him, um, and then you have like all these other guys like. You could like with Hakimi, just his his stamina, like that he could mm. run like the whole match. That was also I was also really impressed by. Um, so it's um, but for me, like of course we all know Valverde, Udegaard, Hakimi, <laughs> but Borja Mayoral is is doing good this season. But yeah, I think he's a name to to mention because he was really good in the in the youth. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being so impressed by him. You're right. He just had, I can't really compare him to a striker because he's quite tall. Um, but he was so, he was really, really good on the ball. Obviously, his finish back then was ridiculous. Yeah. It was really um, good. good to see him doing so well. Yeah. Um, in terms of how the club helped you then, supported you, 
you had so many surgeries, so many injuries. Do you feel that it was helped by being at Real Madrid or do you think that the training schedule was too tough on you? Or do you think maybe having those six physios on the, on the side of the pitch was, was a benefit? Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's really difficult to, to know the, the reason why. But maybe, in my opinion, the only reason that is maybe that I was too young playing with uh, mm. like the older guys and that my body, maybe my, my abilities were, were there, but my body was just not ready yet. Mm. Um, and at that time, I was just like pushing, pushing, pushing. But at the same time, um, my body was just not, not ready to perform on, uh, on that level. So maybe I should have stayed maybe a bit longer with my own age in Ajax, but in Madrid as well. Mm. Um, and uh, to train with, with them for a longer time so that my body maybe could get uh, used to the, to the load. Um, and now I was seen as like this great talent and they were seeing just the abilities and then they move you maybe up yeah. too soon. What's, what's okay because some people can take it, but I think in my, in my, <clears throat> yeah, in my case, it was just uh, too, uh, too soon maybe to, uh, to play at that level. Where did the initial problem start? Because I know everyone's seen the clips of you play. Mm-hmm. You are a fallible player. For a defender that you're going to make look silly, was it was it a bad tackle? Was it something on the pitch or was it in training? Yeah, it was. I had some bad tackles um, and I had some. Um, so like I fell fell because of a tackle, then I broke my wrist. I fell because yeah. of a tackle, then I broke my collarbone. Um, but I also had like a damaged, uh, in, like damaged ankles because of uh, playing too much that's what my uh, my uh, doctor was saying so we had like i played with a lot of pain and with tape and they made like um, these scans and you could see that my ankles were just like overused maybe i, I would say like they were just like they, like pieces of bone were floating in the ankle like it was it was yeah it was not good and what age is it 17 no this was at the age after i left madrid so at 21 till yeah no, yeah 20 21 till 23 i had like three big surgeries on my my ankles yeah that's still so young it's it's incredible that you would have had that much damage and that much effectively yeah. mileage on your ankles you would have played that much by by that age yeah it, it's just like <clears throat> there are people that are just training every day and don't have any problems with it but yeah i was just unlucky that my ankles were just uh maybe not yeah not strong enough to to play that much on all different type of surface and playing with my friends as well but that also brought me the the ability of playing for madrid and and ajax and all these teams so yeah. it's like uh it's a, yeah a thin line between these two because you still need to improve you still need to play you need to play with your friends on the street to improve your uh, technical skills but you also need to make sure that your body can maybe uh, take it. And in my case, I just had, yeah, I had problems with uh, with uh, with it. So um, it's now good, eh? just to say it's all fixed. Everything is crossed out. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm feeling very, very good. So uh, good, good. I can now just move up again to uh, top teams. That's, that's let's see, thing. let's see. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's talk about what you've done since. I saw that you won. Did you win a league title out in the Middle East? Yeah, true. So I, um, after all the injuries and then the big surgeries with, with my ankles, I moved to the Middle East. I've played there for one season. And then I still really had the dream to play back in Europe. Um, mm. First of all, I had to get confidence in my body. But uh, after one year playing there, I really found it back. And then um, I really wanted to, to go somewhere in Europe, starting uh, at some some good level, but just to show everyone that i'm still trying to 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 get as as far as i can in my career so then i uh, i had a great conversation with this team in austria with love needs and um yeah they were uh, they really wanted to uh, to start this project with me so um, i'm really glad that uh, that i'm here now nice yeah i mean it's a, it's a good standard it's the, we were talking before it's the the second division in austria yeah um, it's a bit position. ruthless one one team goes up yeah 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 so it's the second division. It's the level's quite good. So it's uh, 
it's 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 physical, so it's um some part of the game that I have to learn because <laughs> I know how to play with the ball, but I still need to improve on on on, the, on that uh, on that level. So it's it's good for me, and um, yeah, it would be nice to maybe uh, to go after one season to the first league here in Austria, and then let's see where we uh, where we can move to. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, how the career goes, but. You have like great teams here in the first league as well with uh, Rapid Wien, Austria Wien, yeah. Salzburg. We all yeah, know. massive. Yeah, Sturm Graz. So there are good clubs that also play uh, high in uh, in uh, Europa League or even in Champions League sometimes. So uh, yeah, it's good. I still I see my future going. going <laughs> hey, way. I love it, man. And you're feeling good. Yeah, yeah, I feel good. Really good. How was your debut? I saw you played the other day. Yeah, so. First, now I need to get uh, as many minutes, so I'm uh, I'm starting with the um, like the under 23s. To yeah, uh, I played like 45 the other day, um, so it was it was really good. I felt yeah. really good, and then I think when I touch 90 minutes with that team, I will uh, move up as soon as possible to the to the starting 11 in the in the in this team. So uh, I think around. Yeah, well, like the end of April, the plan is to be like a starting eleven, and uh, that's hey. you, know, you always need to uh, visualize what you want, right? So uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, also the normal uh, because after all the all the injuries and all the stuff that I had, I think it's good just to to build up now. Yeah, I man, I can't wait. I think I see a success story coming in. I can see it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Me too. <laughs> I would love it. There's nothing more I would like because, I, again, I've been following you bizarrely since mm-hmm. I'm probably only a couple of years, maybe I'm 28 and you're, what, 25 now? 25, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since we were both teenagers, I've been following you thinking, oh, this guy's unbelievable. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's such a shame to see injuries kind of hamper the direction of careers because it, it happens so often. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, uh, it's the part of the game that I also saw just now with all the the mental toughness, uh, believing in yourself again, trying again. Uh, mm. uh, that was uh, that was really tough, but I learned a lot from it. Um, so um, also give me all this, yeah, with all the the stuff that I did with, uh, yeah, all this uh, self uh, care. You see, like with all uh, trying to get better with with mental mm. mental health, speaking with people, yoga meditation uh, all this stuff just to trying changing your diet like all this stuff just trying okay what's what's also ha- what what can happen as well for uh, to um, to get your body at at the best uh, performance so it was uh, was really good for me i don't want to say that that i am um, that I that I wanted like I don't want to have all these uh, these injuries, but I also learned a lot from uh, from it. Of yeah. Course. So uh, you always have to take something out of it, and um, I think I've I've, I've re- worked really uh, really well on that part. So um, mm. with now staying fit and all the information that I got over the years, I'm just trying my best to uh, to get there yeah. some some good level. I, mean, I love the mentality. The mentality is there, and and the ability is there. Do you still feel like you've got the the same kind of sharpness, same ability you've always had? Mm-hmm. In that case, then yeah, you can go far. Yeah, yeah, I feel good. Like we will see. I just need now uh, like uh, game time. You know, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Sometime you you will just it feels natural again. So uh, that's some what I'm trying uh, every day. I have like my own. Uh, like strict plan what i have to do with with very strict things in it and then um we will see where we uh, where we going so, yeah nice right one last question then before we can say our goodbyes i'm sure you are you training today i trained this morning I trained hey this morning. nice yeah, okay yeah, yeah. um in terms of the contact you made in madrid the friendships the players you played with do you keep in contact with anyone in particular so I'm still following these guys, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, especially the guys that are performing now uh, in the Premier League, like Odegaard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nuts. Paul Verde is, of course, doing very well. So well. Dean Hart, I'm also uh, following. Oh, yeah. So, um, so it's, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, to follow them as, uh, as much as I can. Um, with like real contact, yeah. Sometimes with Leanhard, sometimes with yeah. Of course, I uh, congrats uh, uh, Fran Garcia when he moved to the first team again. And yeah. 
we are all following each other and <laughs> yeah he was also uh saying like good luck again with your career all this stuff so it's it's good to to sp- like i'm not speaking like on daily basis with them but yeah um, you just see something and you just have a little a little contact and uh, i'm also sure when i come to madrid i can maybe text them and we just go out for coffee or whatever yeah <laughs> amazing yeah. yeah that's perfect wow thank you very much for this um it's five years worth the wait let me tell you uh i know everyone at home listening is gonna love it um I just yeah thank you so much we'll keep in touch because i want to see how this season goes for you i want to see how the future goes for you and i do wish you mm-hmm. the very very best thank you guys at home, thank, thank you very much for listening um Ridgem had to bounce halfway through so he's not going to say goodbye but um yeah you guys at home deserve it as well you've been listening for so long you guys have been following real madrid and Castilla, um and to get the chance to interact and talk with Mink has been, it has been a real pleasure and a real insight as well into life in Madrid and, and life as a professional footballer, the ups and the downs. Um, so I hope everybody at home enjoyed it. Uh, we will see you next time. Can I get a Hala Madrid, Mink? Hala Madrid. Hala Madrid. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Very good.